this really cool interview courtesy of New York Times regarding Matteo Blasi from Bogotega Veneta, right? The guy that replaced Daniel Lee and who I thought has done a better job than Daniel Lee, especially in the last few years that he was, or the last couple of seasons that he was at Bottega Veneta. I thought Daniel Lee was definitely losing steam. And I think, so now that we've seen his second collection for Burberry, it's fair to say that Daniel Lee is you know he's a bit washed he's kind of gone the same direction as um nicholas Gasquier and maybe even ricardo tishi in that he somehow lost whatever sparkle he once had at bottega veneta but some people suggest that that sparkle actually came from the team and specifically matteo blasi and that makes sense though because you see what matteo blasi is doing at bottega veneta it's really good it kind of reminds you of the first couple of seasons of bottega veneta maybe not as you know startling and amazing but it's still of that similar ilk and then you imagine the combination of Matteo and, or Matthew, sorry, Matteo, Matthew, you, 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 you kind of think of the combination between Matthew and Daniel Lee, you could imagine how incredible the work is they produced back then. But again, you know, fashion likes to lionize and put people on fucking pedestals and make it seem like they're the only one person that did that thing. So they never really gave him credit while he was there, only when Daniel Lee got fired for allegedly calling some woman in a flipping meeting a black bitch or something, which is funny because then you look at the Burberry fucking front row of his show and it's just full of fucking niggas, right? Everyone's there smiling, kikiing, wearing their fucking tartan shit but no one's really holding him account or drilling in or asking questions about that accusation that the reason why he got let go from Bottega Veneta is because he called somebody a racial slur but hey who am I to say anything I don't know jack shit so going back to the article Matteo Blasi is it called Matthew or is it called Matteo I'm not really too sure let's call Mr Blasi over here on New York Times it says the magician of Milan I want to read this and see what I'll go on because this might give us an indication on what exactly happened um over there at Bottega Veneta um let's see here written by the great and the evanescent and the hater of streetwear Vanessa Friedman at only 30 he was said to be the man behind the Renaissance Art Magella Couture the brand's founding designer left the house a few years later he was to be the secret source in Phoebe Fellows Celine collections. Then he was spotted at Calvin Klein, helping reinvent it under Ralph Simmons. His name kept popping up in reference to top designer jobs. The quote, you can't keep such a talent under wraps, says Susie Menkis. Until now. In late 2012, Mr. Blasi, now 39, became the creative director of Bottega Veneta. After his previous designer, Daniel Lee, who had reinvented the brand in only three years, departed under a cloud of rumors after about misbehavior and high employee turnover. Oh, that's something I didn't know. So it wasn't only that he may allegedly have called that girl a black something in a meeting or somebody in a meeting, right? There also was an issue of there being high turnover at Bottega Veneta when Daniel Lee was there. So many people came, many people left because he might be a cunt to work for. Who knew? Who knew somebody that drops racial slurs in meetings could also be a cunt? Who knew? Um, Mr. Blasi, who had been Lee's number two, inherited not just his headline gig, but a house shrouded in innuendo and the need of yet another sprinkling of fairy dust. What did he do? He changed the leather into denim, flannel, ribbed cotton and knit and fooled everybody. He pulled the rug out from under the assumptions in the most gracious way and made the everyday into a precious object that only the wearer rarely, sorry, really understood. He created a world where nothing is quiet as it seems and populated it with an entire assortment of passers-by. He played sleight of hand out of the hierarchy of taste. Yeah, his stuff is fucking great though, to be fair. You can see why the Daniel Lee that we now have is missing something. And I guess the stuff he's missing is Matteo Blasi or Matthew Blasi, I keep saying Matthew, I keep saying Matteo, it's definitely Matthew, but we're just going to say Mr. Blasi, let's continue here, another some another great looks over the seasons from him at Bottega, lately there's been a growing rift in the fashion world between designers that who make content designers who make clothes, the content crew considers fashion as a subset of the entertainment, and a clothes crew sees fashion as a service, I think she's taking a dig again at streetwear, Vanessa's got a real issue with streetwear, and I feel like niggas, she needs to chill, allegedly, I don't know, but she needs to relax. I feel like she's taking a shot. You can do two things at the same time, and the other approach isn't bad. Just because you like, you know, you all like the content and creating experience and that kind of influences the clothes, it doesn't make you less of a designer than somebody that thinks only about their clothes. Let's relax. Um, the appointment of Pharrell Williams, the creative director of Louis Vuitton, was in many ways the, uh, the apophysis of the content phenomenon, in which what matters is the spectacle and how it resonates throughout the world. The garments serve as a souvenir. <laughs> She's calling Louis Pharrell's Louis Vuitton merch. <laughs> 
<laughs> this woman is so disrespectful for streetwear. She fucking hates streetwear, man. And again, I'm, I'm going to take it back. I don't think she thinks she even hates niggas. She probably just hates streetwear. And she's a proper fashion head with a f capital F. But that's the thing with someone like a Vanessa Friedman. She kind of wants to be liked and pretends to be likable. Whereas a uh, Kathy Horn is just not, right? She's not in the business of trying to be likable, right? She's got that fucking pug face. She's always frowning. She's not here to be your friend. The Vanessa Friedman tries to be your friend, wants to be all smiley and whatever. But deep down, she absolutely hates hoodies. She hates t-shirts. She hates sneakers, right? She hates hippity hop playing as a soundtrack in, you know, runway shows. Because for some reason, runway shows are so loud. If you listen to them on YouTube, and especially if someone's recording them on their phone, you can hear the fucking microphones rattling. They play the music so loud on fucking runway shows. So if you're one of those editors and whatever, and you generally don't like hip hop, you have to be surrounded by all these guys and girls smelling of fucking marijuana. And then you're in this flipping show where they're blasting Chief Keef or, you know, I don't know, Yeet or fucking <laughs> Playboy Carty. You're going to get so annoyed. See, his quote here says, I do not open the computer for the last six months, Mr. Blasi. I have two, but I don't use them much. I sketch a lot and I talk a lot and I look at books and I have a phone. That probably explains why it's so good, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, right? He's not sat here just like copy and pasting everything he sees on the fucking timeline or in the explore page. Everything's coming from references that you find in books, talking to people, going out, seeing things, watching movies and shit, which a lot of people don't do, myself included. There's no wonder the work is so good. On the floor below the enormous windows were 16 different piles of paper, each one corresponding to a different collection of project, um, perfume, new store concept, a fanzine he creates with people he admires, mostly, uh, most recently the British designer, Hussain Shalayan, um, which involved Mr. Shalayan playing with a pen and ink and watercolor and glitter to draw pieces from Mr. Bloody's last show. On the walls were a series of artworks Mr. Bloody collects first drafts. Um, he started, he said, because that's all he could afford and he likes the idea that they're the first expression of something i like that um, it's not that i need to have more and more but two or three times a year i try to find something that makes me happy to live with i'd rather have my money on the wall than in the bank okay so similar to like a rapper right um would buy themselves a big chain every time they dropped an album to kind of commemorate that release and to kind of note a, you know a time in history when you had a certain amount of money and maybe every year you kind of up the amount you spend on it so it's cool to kind of look back over your career and look at them through chains he does it with collections or whatever every two years by buying first drafts of art from you know maybe notable or up-and-coming artists that's pretty cool to be fair you get to invest in somebody you also get to have the first expression of their art or of their creativity, which is cool. And you also get to invest in something and not have it sit in a bank. So if the banks do kind of implode, you've got all your money on paper, which is kind of wild, right? Especially if you accidentally set fire to your house like fucking Olivier Roisting and stuff. Um, it continues here. To, oh, look at that wristband. Look at that um, bracelet he's got. Lovely. What's that chair? The chair is by Gatano Pessi from his spring 2023 show it continues here it says when he likes something marlboro lights he smokes a pack a day fucking hell bro how do you how, how does he stay so fucking slim um uh and he also has a stracicella a stracicella which is an ice cream with a tiny shavings of chocolate that he loves so much that he uses a special rug design in the image of his last show i guess i think i've seen these i think i've seen people on instagram and tiktok post about these things how the fuck does he stay so skinny if he smells a pack a day and he has one of those um, Stratocialettes Strata every day? Bloody hell. I wish I could live like that. Gaetano Pisky chairs he commissioned for the last show. Before that, he whispers, it's wonderful. The way Raph Simmons, the co-creative director of Prado, who has been Blasi's boss twice, um, has puts it. Matt is a very free in his head. He has no fear of showing anything he believes in creatively. He always had so many ideas. Add latex, kitchen gloves. Um, what about a marching band jacket? Some made completely no sense and some were so genius, I would say, of course we're going to do that. In the past, okay, and it says here, in the past, I've been proposed a few beautiful houses, Mr. Blasi said, talking about job offers that he got before arriving at Bottega. He couldn't name names, only saying that one was very beautiful, about craft, one was very commercial, but still about fashion, and one was smaller house that I thought could be reactivated without being passe, pass but I never felt like it was the right time. I saw a lot of designers taking stuff quickly, and for me, it was important to build something first. I wanted to know my job, know myself. Okay, 
I like this guy. He's in it for the long haul, isn't it? But I wonder which the what houses they were. I wonder which ones they were. Mr. Blasi grew up in Paris. His father is an expert in pre-Columbian art, and his mother is an historian and a researcher. Um, he has an older brother who is an airplane pilot. Shit, family stacked in it. <laughs> and twin sister who works in Singapore. He has a um, he was a rambunctious child so much so in thirteen, his parents sent him to a master's school in a French cartoon side. Um, when they that didn't take, they sent him to Pagbourne College, a military boarding school in England for a year. He said he liked it, so he went to military college. Fucking hell, you never you never be able to tell from him, innit? He thought about going into archaeology, but ended up at Le Cambre, a fashion school in Brussels, um, because his mother thought that he could be good for him to have a skill. Um, Julian Dosenza, a creative director from Raban, was in his class. Anthony Vaccarello, the creative director of Saint Laurent, was a year above him. Wow. His graduate collection was about Claudie Hagnier, have you pronounced that? The first French woman in space who became the Minister of Science and involved the big fur coats covered in silver fabric, Mr. Blasi said. I had a lot of fun. Wow. Look at him. So yeah, he looks like he's a pleasure to deal with, right? So everyone at Bottega Veneta must have they must have rent they must have breathed a huge sigh of relief when Daniel Lee got fired and he came in. Because they must have absolutely loved him. He must have been the real pleasure to deal with. And the fucking dark cloud that was Daniel Lee is now descended on fucking Burberry. And all we get is fucking fabric and fabric down the fucking runway. It looks horrendous. Anyway, it continues. Mr. Simmons liked the collection so much, he offered Mr. Blasio a job at his namesake label as men's wear designer. Another designer named Pieter Mulier was already working there, and he and Blasio soon became a couple. Aww. That's how he met his flipping um, boyfriend, I guess, at the time. Um, we did everything together, he said. Go to fabric fairs, go to Paris. Four years later, however, soon he's 20, Mr. Blasi jumped from our Jello artisanal collection and a brand's equivalent couture. That's where he began to experiment with the idea of transformation, one of a kind of material. I could really use my passion digging, being curious, which comes from his archaeology historian background, I'm guessing. But he said he was worried that he would be pigeonholed as a conceptionist. So he ended up hopscotching to Celine when Phoebe Filer was creative director to work on the more commercial pre-collections. And from there to Calvin Klein, where he teamed up with Miss Simmons and Mr. Mulier once again. It was Bis Blasi said like high school reunion. It was very romantic. We were going to meet new people. We we're going to live in New York. He and Mr. Mulier rented a weekend place in Connecticut and got the rescue puppy called John John. But then the Trump election happened and the Calvin collections became less about the American dream and the American nightmare. Somewhat of a dismay of PVH, the conglomerate that owned Calvin Klein, Mr. Lee and his inner circle were fired abruptly after two years. It was hell, Mr. Blasi says. Like when you have to, your boxes on the street, it's something you see in movies and then you're the main character. <laughs> He thought about leaving fashion instead of ended up in Los Angeles to help his artist Sterling Ruby with a collection that showed during a Petioma. Fuck, man. All the stuff that I liked, I've seen. He's had a hand in it. Shit. That collection that we saw from fucking Sterling Ruby during Petioma, he was involved in that. Makes so much sense, innit? That's when Daniel Lee, who had been the design director at Celine when Blasi was there, had just been tasked with updating Bottega Veneta, came calling. Uh, though Blasi had reportedly got fed up with Mr. Lee's erratic leadership and resigned following the show in Detroit. Wow. So he was there for that show they did in Detroit, that Motor City show. Wow. So he must have been there also when there was at Bergheim, right? That last show at Bergheim that was terrible as well. The one, the infamous one where all the guys went to it during lockdown. Um, Virgil Abloh was there, RIP, and Skepta, Burner Boy. Crazy, bro. Okay, so he resigned before, and then he got rehired again. So he says, oh, cool. Mr. Buzzer reportedly got fed up with Mr. Lee's erratic leadership and resigned following a show in Detroit. He declined to discuss the situation. When Leo Rognon, the chief executive, was looking for Mr. Lee's replacement, it was clear that he had the right person already here. Mr. Blas, oh man, honestly, Vanessa Friedman, stop hating on streetwear. It's never going to go anywhere. It's here to fucking stay. People like to wear hoodies. People like to wear t-shirts and jeans and shit and sneakers when, you know, and still be into fashion because it's way more um, approachable and easier to wear than the stuff that comes down the runway. It just is what it is. It's going to be here until the end of time. Stop fucking crying about it. The return to tailoring this fucking dog whistle to get rid of blacks and streetwear and shit isn't going to happen. That subheadline, the anti-Pharrell, you know. <sighs> 
Mr. Blasi approached Protego Valencia with two goals. First, to challenge himself to make something that was wearable because we are expensive. It should be an investment. Um, timeless is the word in I cannot hear anymore, he says. <laughs> it's more about responsibility to have a designer to offer something that lasts, but also it's not boring. The first thing he did was reduce the size of the design team so that everyone could sit around the same table. I love that idea. Then he involved the craftspeople, the leather workers and the fabric developments in every conversation. Again, he must have been a pleasure to deal with, innit? Um, he knows everyone's name, says Mr. Rongon. He listens to everyone. Um, he brought a new mood to the studio. <laughs> Daniel Lee was definitely a dark cloud. <laughs> I would love to hear what some people that work at Burberry right now with Daniel Lee have to say, because it seems like he is the problem. But again, when you're white, how many second chances do you get? Can you imagine a black designer getting away with that kind of behavior, right? Like forcing one of the most talented up and coming designers in the industry to, to, to quit because you're such a fucking horrible boss and it not impacting your ability to get another job. You still get another one, even though there's rumors of you saying a racial slur in a meeting. Zabazi believes the products that serve a function like the Andomion bag, a practical Incarciato style that Mr. Rognon said has become Bottega's best selling item. Really? Let's see what that looks like. I don't remember that one. Is that the one that kind of looks like it's a net, but it's leather? Let's see what that one is by Bottega. Oh, wow. This bag is a best selling item in their collection. Hmm. Okay. I would never have guessed it to be fair. I'm not going to know. I would never have guessed this particular bag by Bottega Veneta um, would be the one that is the best um, selling. This uh, large Andia, Andiamo, Andiamo bag, top handle bag, meticulously crafted from supple Incarcito Napa leather with a sliding crossbody strap and a signature knot detail. Okay, this is the best selling bag at fucking Bottega Veneta. Big up fucking uh, Mr. Blasi. He came in and completely changed it. Because I'm assuming before that, the best-selling item was those lug boots. Now it's this bag. Oh, look at how it fits. That's exactly how I want my um, Telfar to look, actually. I need to, I need to redo the straps, but I want to wear it like that. That's exactly what I want to go for. Wow. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Go back to the article. 25 such bags were produced, costing 11000 each, which Bergdorf got free and they sold immediately said mr fargo at this stage said mr penoir bottega is close to becoming the third largest brand in the group after just just after gucci and saint laurent and vying balenciaga so bottega veneto is ba is about to take over fucking um balenciaga what is that in sales let me read that again at this stage mr penoir bottega veneto is close to becoming the third largest brand i don't know what that means largest does that mean in sales turnover Either way, that's very impressive for the short amount of time he's been there. Even their most commercial pizzas are special, Mr. Mr. Fargo. We're all in it. Mr. Blasi recently got his apartment in Milan after surfing a series of Airbnbs. Mr. Mulia, now the creative director of Alaya, and Mr. Blasi split up earlier this year. Oh, that's a shame. They are friends and share the custody of their dog called John John, though the breakup is still too hard for him to talk about. Custody of a dog is hilarious, isn't it? But hey. Um, the apartment at the top of the 1960 modernist building looks like a bit of a uh, houseboat inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright. Dark wood slanted ceilings with a step up and one side and a tiny balcony that covered in greenery. I walked in and I thought, this looks familiar. And it turned out to be a re a renting the same apartment that Mr. Simmons had rented a long time during the Stins Credit Director Jill Sander. Wow. He shares the flat during the weekend with Mr. Debouchere. They have a music planning meetings. No, they have music planning meetings in the kitchens late at night over drinks and more corporate meetings in the morning looking over roofs of Milan and drinking coffee. Mr. Blasi often brings art from his house to his office and vice versa. He shot the most recent particular campaign in the courtyard of the apartment featuring a Maricala, a Maricala Boscono and his very stoic looking doorman. Lately, he has been thinking about uh, nature. I'm interested in fish. Can we look at the birds? <laughs> okay cool and then one bit i also found really interesting in this bit was this section here at the end it says he's styling his own shows now right he says last season he began styling his shows himself which he will do again this season i'd rather make my own mistakes he is glad that he took this time in stepping forward because now even if i doubt i know a question mark can become not just i don't know it can become an adventure 
very curious very interesting designer interested to see how it develops and goes on but the illuminating and interesting fact here is that daniel lee was always a problem at Bottega Panetta. there was always issues around him high turnover obviously that rumored incident with the racial slur in the meeting could be another reason but one of the startling ones is the fact that matteo or mr blasi actually quit it sounds like or stepped down from his role at Bottega when Daniel Lee was there after the disastrous show at Detroit one of the worst ones that they put out or under Daniel Lee's tutelage so clearly it shows that he's a bit, a bit of a repeated offender to be fair um Daniel Lee but hey he's white so he gets plenty more of real opportunities than I would ever get in my life but anyway big up Mr Blasi excellent excellent interview in New York Times I'll put the link in the show notes for you if you want to check it out yourself I will put the show notes in the link for you if you want to check it